We are happy to have our officials here and representatives. We will start by presenting the excellencies from the African Union. We have uh, Her Excellency Amira El Fadil. She is the AU Commissioner for Social Affairs. We also have uh, Her Excellency uh, Josefa Lionel Correa Sacco. She is the AU Commissioner for Rural Economy. We have uh, His Excellency Smile Shaggy, who will be joining us uh, uh, shortly. He is the AU Commissioner for Peace and Security. We have uh, His Excellency uh, Albert Muchanga, uh, who is the AU Commissioner for Trade and Industry. On the other side, from the EU side, we have His Excellency Joseph Borrell, who will be joining us shortly. He is the EU High Representative and Vice President for a Stronger Europe in the World. We have Her Excellency Margaret Vestager, yeah, who is the EU Executive Vice President for a Europe fit for the digital age. We have His Excellency Franz Timmermans. He is the EU Executive Vice President for European Green Deal. We have Her Excellency uh, Margaritis Skinas, who is the EU Vice President for Promoting European Way of Life. Uh, we'll proceed as could, follows. Could uh, please uh, the, the co-chairs of the clusters on the, on the Green Deal and the ecologic transition give a, a brief two-minute uh, overview of uh, the discussions uh, that they had, and then we will proceed with the next ones. Okay. So, please. Yeah, okay. Here with the, the microphone. On the podium, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Green Deal. <laughs> the Green Deal. Please, the two, if you would like to. Yes. The two of you us. have two minutes. Double act. Each, yes. yeah. Yeah. Each yeah. two minutes. First, ladies, first you. Ladies, ladies before first. gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we are here just to report on uh, what or share with you, the press, what we've been discussing since morning. This is our 10th uh, college to college meeting. And uh, all the, the clusters meet this morning, and we had really a key uh, discussions. A discussion focus on both agenda. The agenda 2063, which is our flagship program for development, the blueprint for African, uh, uh, for African uh, social economic transformation. And we also uh, we looked at the agenda 2030, sustainable development and all its goal. As you know, uh, we have a 10 years action plan in at the African Union, and this 10 years is going to expire in 2025. We have only five years to really comply with the goals we set, you know, for the deliverable of uh, the Africa we want under the agenda 2063. We also have another challenge, the global agenda, which is 2030. What are we doing? It's remaining only 10 years. Years. So we need to speed up our ambition in order to deliver on all the goals that uh, we, we, we set for the African transformation as well as the continued development of uh, EU. So we had a very nice uh, conversation on uh, uh, climate issues. I'm sure when you go to the website, you'll be able to know, you know further, uh, further information and our final communique will inform on what we have done. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we had a great talk about something that is of a great importance to all of us. How do we fight climate change? How do we create better opportunities, especially for our young people? How do we make sure we grasp the opportunities the new economy will be giving us in the context of also having to face uh, quite a lot of challenges in terms of adapting to changing weather patterns, changing um, uh, desertification, the uh, present uh, locust infestation we've seen in Africa, for which we really feel very sorry. Um, so there's a lot we need to do. And there's a l we're all on the same page. That's the good news today. Um, I believe we should all, um, African Union and European Union, be together in preparing the COP that will happen in November in uh, Glasgow. Uh, so that we have a joint approach to the issue of adaptation, which is very dear to Africa. We also agreed that we would look closer into the issue of uh, swift reaction when there is um, a problem, when there is 
a natural disaster or another uh, element that needs our swift intervention. We also look very closely at uh, the needs for energy. Um, this continent will need increasing uh, levels of energy uh, across the board, and the only thing we can contribute is close cooperation and also ideas to avoid making the mistakes we have made in the past so that Africa can really leapfrog into uh, a sustainable energy uh, future. Uh, Africa is already making some incredible advances in that area, but I think um, working together we can even reap more benefits from these incredible opportunities. And finally, on transportation, I have to um, say that we also agree that we would increase our cooperation, especially in rail transport, something that we haven't focused on uh, very much so far, but where there is an interest on both sides to increase the cooperation as well. Thank you. While you are regaining your positions yes. to, to wait for the questions, I will now, it's now my honor to invite uh, the co-chairs for the Cluster on Sustainable Growth and Jobs, uh, His Excellency Albert uh, Muchanga and uh, Her Excellency Margaret Vestager. Is that first? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think we can fully confirm uh, the report from, uh, from the first discussion. Uh, that there is a sense of, uh, of communality, uh, of being on the same page. Uh, we discussed a number of different things. Uh, we have a digital strategy in the European Union, so has the African Union. And one of the things deeply shared here is that the fundamentals will have to be in place. Infrastructure, skills, uh, and of course that we enable uh, data to travel. But maybe the most important thing, that the culture around digitization is to be human-centered. It's about what we as individuals, as citizens, can make of digital tools. Uh, we spoke a lot about uh, the economy as well, the very impressive uh, economic growth uh, on the African continent as such, but also how to continue working together from the very positive progress made on the Common Task Force. So we agreed uh, to continue in a number of areas, in economics, uh, in digital, in uh, trade, uh, and that would be my final uh, word here. The warm uh, congratulations on the free trade uh, agreement. Uh, we will do what we can do in order to enable uh, uh, that to be a success and also to push that further in sharing experiences when it comes to customs union and single market. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just to add that, uh, indeed, it was a very, very engaging discussion, uh, reaffirming the importance of the partnership uh, between uh, Africa and uh, Europe. Uh, one of the key issues that we agreed upon is uh, to have uh, a business summit on the margins of uh, the, uh, the, the, the summit which, between Africa and EU, which will be held in Brussels in October this year. Mm -hmm. And we also agreed to share experiences on the development of uh, the African, um, uh, on the development of the African uh, Customs Union and the single market, taking into account the uh, experiences of Europe. Uh, that's a, a very fundamental uh, agreement. And uh, like indicated, we agreed also to cooperate in the multilateral fora, like the World Trade Organization and uh, uh, the World Customs Organization. The importance of high growth economic growth rates to Africa were emphasized and noted. Six of the world's the fastest growing economies are from Africa. We need to increase that number so that uh, we create uh, opportunities for job creation. And to this end, we also agreed to enhance collaboration in the area of uh, investment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellencies. Allow me now to invite uh, the co-chairs for the Cluster on Peace and Security, Governance and Resilience, uh, His Excellency uh, Smile Shergi and uh, His Excellency Joseph Borrell. Well, I think, uh, <coughs> as you know, uh, peace and security is at the center of uh, our partnership. And the best example, as you all know, is what we have been doing in Amisom. Uh, combating Shabab, and uh, today what we are also doing in Sahel and and uh, in this in the Horn Africa, and then also in the Great Lake region. So I think this uh, this opportunity of today 
was just an occasion to reaffirm our resolve, our common resolve, to act together in, in facing a global threat that is mainly terrorism and, uh, and violent extremism. And also uh, combine not only the architecture for peace and security, but also the governance architecture. I think it's important that we deal with the root causes of all this crisis in terms of uh, uh, inclusivity, mainly of youth and women in all what we are doing, in also addressing issues of justice and injustice, and uh, also issues of human rights and uh, the respect of international uh, laws and, uh, and the rights. So I think it has been a very good conversation and uh, we have decided even to go further in uh, not only uh, working on post-conflict situation by uh, creating uh, a group that will be working on justice and transitional justice and also taking in account the, uh, the new threats, that is cyber criminality, that's the, uh, the challenges coming from uh, artificial intelligence. So we also have decided to create another group working on these issues in order to address the challenges that are coming out in terms of using uh, terrorism by, of these uh, uh, modern tools but also to address issues of hate speech, uh, of uh, fake news, and their implication not only on the socio-fabric in our societies, but also uh, in terms of their implication on peace and security. So I think we have had uh, an amazing discussion and uh, even an agreement to work further and to, uh, to be creative in the way we are going to work in the future. Please, Thank you. <clears throat> well, little else can I say. The only thing is to stress the fact that uh, investment and in job creations requires stability. We are not going to, to grow, we are not going to invest, we are not going to create jobs without uh, stability. And in order to reach stability, there are three points which uh, we agree on. First, what happens in Africa impacts Europe and vice versa. We are not living in different worlds. What's happening in Africa affects our security and vice versa. And ensuring laws, lasting peace and security in Africa is a shared interest for the Europeans. Second, African solutions to African problems. We cannot come here, the Europeans, saying that's what is you have to do. No. Only the Africans can find solutions to the African problems, but we can help through regional, international organizations. We can help, we are doing, we will do more. Third, need to adapt, as well in Europe as in Africa, because we are facing with the changing nature of the threats. We therefore need to adapt, We're working with a new methodology, we have been talking about all this, about uh, cybercrime, digitalization, artificial intelligence, how to work more on the rule of law, elections, and human rights. We exchange views about the European Peace Facility, which is an extra budgetary instrument that will be addressing military and defense needs, security needs in Africa. As the, the chairman of the African Union said very rightly, we have to silence the guns, but in order to silence the guns, and happily, we need guns. We are not going to stop the terrorists from killing people just by preaching. We need guns, we need arms, we need military capacities, and that we are going to provide, to help to provide our African friends, because their security is our security. So if I may add one word, both organizations have agreed to work to strengthen multilateralism and work for its development and its respect because this is uh, very important for all of us and for the future of the generations in Europe and Africa.
Still on the outcomes of this uh, important meeting, we are calling on the, the co-chairs of the cluster on migration, mobility, youth skills, and innovation, Her Excellency Amira El Fadil from the AU side, and His Excellency Margar Margaritis uh, Skinnes from the EU side. Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me start by congratulating ourselves the two commissions uh, for having a very uh, successful and productive college-to-college -college, uh, meeting uh, since early morning. Uh, on migration issues, uh, and also I'm, I will touch upon issues to do with uh, skills and uh, creating more jobs in Africa. We agreed uh, on a way forward, and uh, on the policy uh, level issues, we agreed that we will continue our continent-to-continent -continent dialogue on migration and, and mobility. And we, we will have it as an umbrella uh, framework. This is, will be our co comprehensive framework. But under this framework, we will continue doing what we are doing in the different processes, is a Khartoum process or a BAT process or Horn of Africa Initiative, Valetta uh, Action Plan. All of what we are doing, we are bringing all of this under uh, this uh, new joint uh, policy framework, which we already started working on it, but today we agreed, both of us, we, to have it uh, as our main uh, joint framework on migration and mobility dialogue. Uh, second, we agreed that uh, the task force, the AU, EU, UN task force, uh, which was established on the issue of the stranded migrant in Libya, it will be expanded and also it, we will have a specific initiative on uh, the G5 Sahel issues, which is issues related uh, to the Peace and Security uh, Council, but we will be working with them uh, in relation to issues to do with migration. We also uh, agreed that uh, we together, we will make sure that we will operationalize the three migration centers uh, that just been the structure and the statute of the three centers just been adopted by the uh, African Union summit, which ended uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the center, the observatory in Morocco, the um, center of research and study in Mali, and the operational center for combating human trafficking in Sudan, Khartoum. These three centers also, it's our new mechanisms in the African Union, and also it will be one of the uh, shared areas uh, of cooperation. We also agreed that we will enhance more our work on tackling uh, human trafficking and the smuggling of migrants, and we will agree on how to share intelligence information in this area and how to bring the different stakeholders from both sides uh, to make sure that we will address uh, this crime. Uh, we agreed on uh, introducing new areas of cooperation between the two commissions. We agreed to work on health security issues, and we agreed that uh, Africa CDC with Europe CDC, they will work together, but this is an area, a new area of cooperation between the two commissions. And also we agreed to bring back the cooperation on culture and cre creative industry issues. This in brief, um, regarding uh, Human Resource and Science and Technology Department, there is an agreement that to continue with the skills programs and the TEFIT programs and the creation of more jobs and uh, making sure that uh, we will address the issues to do with education and the labor market demands. Thank you. Well, it was an honor to co-chair what we, uh, Armin and I, proclaimed the people's cluster. Um, it was uh, something that allowed us to check on the progress, substantial progress made since 2014 and the Abidjan summit. By the end of this year, 35,000 Africans would benefit from Erasmus mobility programs. Almost uh, 500 million Africans would uh, go through vocational training schemes financed in a joint EU-Africa vocational training initiative. We are uh, networking all our research labs. We are working on women empowerment, but also looking back on what we collectively achieved on migration. We are proud to recall that we managed to repatriate 50,000 people stranded in Libya and protect 5,000 vulnerable uh, people in need of international protections in Libya through this trilateral meet, uh, network of a AU, EU, and the UN. And as we are preparing now our new EU pact for asylum and migration, and we're looking up to the next summit 
in October between our European and African leaders, we agreed that migration will continue to be um, a nexus of cooperation, always keeping in mind that we're looking for win-win uh, situations, a partnership of equals. Uh, we are determined to address also issues of mobility, but legal pathways and integration of the people who may find their way back following readmission agreements. All in all, a very ambitious agenda ahead, building on a substantial progress behind us. Thank you, so much. Thank you very much. We'll quickly take two questions because they have to go for a quick uh, function. Uh, yes, I'm already yes. seeing the hand of the they AFP. Need to go for lunch. Give them a microphone, please. Uh, they ask their questions, and all of them will answer the questions before they leave. Thank you very Depends much. To who? Depends. Yes, <laughs> yes. 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 AFP, please. AFP, present your press and your name. Yeah, my name is Robbie Corbillet. I'm AFP. Uh, I have a security question. At the recent AU summit, according to the draft declarations, Member states agreed to deploy 3,000 troops to the Sahel for six months to reinforce security operations there. What is the latest on that decision, and what are the next steps for preparing for the deployment? And for Minister Borov, what does the EU think about that? Does the, or does the EU think about that? Does the EU think that that would be an effective intervention, sending 6,000 AU troops to the Sahel? Or could it potentially complicate some of the security measures already in place? There? Take the second, uh, Let's take the second question, please. Yeah, give the mic. We have interpretation, so for those who need to. My name is Samuel Kabir with Uber. My first question goes to the second presentation, and it's on trade. Uh, from the earlier presentation, uh, the free trade area is going to help, but the European thing is going to help Europe uh, trade more with, with Africa. Are you able to quantify how much Europe will be able to trade with Africa with the free trade and how much Africa will also be able to trade with Europe? Uh, the second question is on, on digitization. Digitization has been mentioned a few times. Uh, the OECD is also trying to overhaul its uh, new digital tax reform. So uh, where does the EU and where does the AU stand with digital taxation? Thank you. I think uh, when it comes to the first question, on the decision of the summit to work on deploying a force of 3,000 troops to help the Sahel countries degrade terrorist groups. I think uh, this is a decision that we will be working on together with the G5 Sahel and uh, the ECOWAS. Uh, as you remember, ECOWAS made also a very bold uh, contribution in uh, in the extraordinary summit in Ouagadougou in last September, then confirmed in December in, uh, in Abuja. So I think uh, this is uh, one, of, one step in, in the right direction in terms of appropriation of African solutions to African <coughs> problems. So I think this decision has been taken because as we, as we see, as you can recognize yourself, the threat is, uh, is expanding it's becoming more complex, and the terrorists are even bringing new modus operandi from uh, Afghanistan and from Afghan and from Shabab. In, so I think we have to address this situation, which is even complicated with the the uh, intercommunal uh, intercommunity violence. So I think it is a work in progress, but we will do it in total coherence with uh, what we have on the ground so that uh, it will be an added value to what is uh, done by our member states in the region. Please. I wonder if I understood well the question. The question was if this deployment of uh, African Union troops can be problematic for the European Union? I cannot imagine a reason for this being problematic. Maybe you can enlighten me. Well, there are a number of security operations already on the ground in the Sahel. Could adding uh, 3,000 more troops potentially complicate those security measures, whether it's the G5 Sahel, whether it's French troops that are active in Mali and elsewhere in the region? I'm wondering if you're concerned about integrating all of these efforts. Well, I think we have enough logistic and coordination capacity in order to manage all together. You know how big is the Sahel? You know how Burkina Faso, 
70% of the territory is out of control of the government. In October last year, when the terrorists killed 90, no, 19 people in a, in a mosque in north of Burkina Faso, at that time there were almost 500 people displaced. Today there are more than 700 people displaced. In just six months, 200,000 more people displaced. 14,000 schools being closed. The task is enormous. So this truth will be very much welcome because our efforts, even they are important, they are completely unable to facilitate the capacity to control such a big territory. We, the European Union, our missions are mainly training missions. We are not fighting missions. We are not even peacekeeper missions. We are not in the field, we are in the barracks. We are just in Mali, in Niger, we are not in Burkina Faso. So I have to welcome this deployment of troops, because uh, for sure there are the United Nations troops, there are some French troops, 4,000 that will be increased. I don't think any problem. I think uh, by the contrary, <coughs> have to thank the willingness of the African Union to take also their part of uh, burden sharing of this difficult and complex and uh, very painful situation. Thank, Thank you very you much. So much. Let's address the second question from the, uh, the two co-chairs. Please, you yes, you can use session? the, yeah, you can use the, the Well, thank you very much. Uh, we touched upon digital taxation as well. Uh, and I feel that we share uh, the same uh, sense of urgency uh, that we as, um, uh, as responsible uh, push for all the many, many, many businesses who pay their taxes to see that also businesses with a digital business model pay their taxes. Uh, from the European Union side, we are strong promoters of a global uh, agreement. Uh, OECD is an amazing chef de file, uh, both on the proposal of Pillar 1 and Pillar 2, which are now being discussed. Uh, we very much hope for a global agreement. If that is not the case, we will pick up the file again, uh, because digital taxation is very important for us to update sort of corporate taxation to understand how digital value creation uh, also uh, influences how we should see corporate taxation. And I think we share this uh, completely out of a sense of fairness towards the many, many businesses who pay their taxes already. Thank you. Excellency Mchanga. Yes, uh, let me give a context on the development of the African continent of free trade area. Uh, the context is that um, right now we have the lowest level of intracontinental trade. It's uh, about uh, 15 to 18 percent, depending on the sources of, of uh, statistics. But the level of uh, intra-EU trade is 70 percent. So the first task is uh, to really use this large, uh, large market to uh, increase intra-African trade. And uh, our calculations are that uh, uh, within five years of this operation, and it's going to start uh, operating on 1st of July, uh, this year, uh, we should be able to increase intra-African trade by more than 15 percent in terms of from the base. Then over and above that, we are also going to uh, mainstream the informal cross-border trade, the traders. And when we, we bring them into the formal mar mar market of intra-African trade, uh, automatically intra-African trade will grow by another 15 percent. So this is the context in which we are. Then with respect to the rest of the world, right now Africa's share of global trade is just about three percent. Sometimes the, the, the figure is lower. And the, our calculations are that in the next five to 20 years, if we, we develop the African market, we should be able to increase Africa's uh, uh, share of global trade by 6%. Now, out of that, we need to now go into uh, econometric analysis as to the original patterns from each of the regions. But the good news is that in, right now, uh, uh, Europe in, uh, is Africa's biggest trading partner and also uh, the largest source of investment. And the investments, I think we're told this morning, is around 398 billion US dollars. Thank you.
so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to thank all the resource people and the commissioners from the African Union and the European Union commissions who have been here to provide you with all this outcome information.